For this video, I want to look at the application of the pinned or tenon collar from the CBA or Abana Level 3 grill. If you're not familiar with the grill, please visit either the CBA website, calsmith.org, or Abana's website, abana.org, for more details about the national curriculum and a PDF of the grill drawing. The Level 3 grill has a centre collar that can be made in three different ways. The plain wrap, top left, the forged, top right, and the pinned or tenoned as shown in the bottom middle. In terms of degrees of difficulty, I'd put the wrap collar as being the easiest, the forged collar as being perhaps the hardest, and the pin collar as being somewhere in between. But the pin collar opens up other applications that would be hard to achieve with the other two types shown. These are photographs from the Tiju screens of Hampton Court Palace in the UK, uh, circa around about 1700. And this collar is applied to something that's fixing a scroll and leaf work to the main frame of the screen by way of a tenon. So that's kind of useful. Same screen, um, this is a collar applied to a balustrade and you can see here um, that there is a forged collar and then that's just pinned to a cross member. Uh, again, another way of gaining rigidity. Imagine trying to make that, uh, forge that out of one piece. And here you can see very large collars and I'm indicating that with the laser here, um, which I'm going to call Palisters, I think, although I'm not quite sure if that's a correct application. Um, and that is supporting the liar there um, uh, for the whole screen, one of 12. For my grill, I chose to make a narrow bead on the collar and therefore was obliged to cut two tenons rather than try and get a tenon in the middle of that narrow bead. Tenons don't have to be round, but certainly a round tenon does make it easier to make the mortise. I want you to note that my tenons are not centered in this backstrap material. They're put towards the back edge. And what that gives me is the ability then to have more meat in the edge of the, uh, the mortise. Let's have a look at another photograph. And I'm looking here. And if I didn't have that additional material, then I'd run the risk of blowing out the mortise as I head over the tenon. Collars are not structural, and certainly for an outside application, as you run the risk of the collar being rust jacked and your scroll work coming undone. In this case, I've riveted my scrolls together before applying the collar. For a more commercial application, I might be inclined to just carve a groove out here with a four inch grinder and then fill it full of a well bead. Here's my collar ready to be applied to my level three grill. This is work at a blacksmith school in Europe. In this case, uh, with a wider bead or center bead, the smiths can get away with a single tenon. And you can see the application here. You can use a rectangular mortise and tenon. Nice look. In this case, the collar material was screwed in place from the outside. One of the better applications that I know of is the angled collar, where you've got scrolls or decorative elements that are staggered, much as in a stair rail. But with the hard corners that you are somewhat obliged to make, the remainder of the scrolls, or sorry, the remainder of the collars will have to match. Enter the forged collar. And here are my steps in making the forged collar. As you chamfer the edges of the scroll work, you can also chamfer the edges of the mandrel. And that goes a long way in helping prevent cracks as you forge this collar. And the cracks will form at the corner if you work over a sharp edge. That's it from me. I'll see you on the next one.